Hi folks, this is the third video that I'm making in this series where I'm using the uh, 3D Experience uh, FEA solver to uh, simulate the interference fit of a brass bushing and a, uh, a shaft. In video one, I assumed I modeled the shaft as rigid elements, shell elements. And uh, in video two, I uh, modeled that shaft as an analytical rigid surface which obviously does not have to be meshed now in this video i'm assuming that both that's the shaft uh, and the the bushing are made of brass and the uh, obviously the diameter of the, the the bushing is a little bit smaller than the shaft and they're shrink fitted okay you can see in this uh, in this uh, uh, illustration here that because the shaft is deformable, once the shrink fit, shrink fit is, 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 is done, actually you can see that it, it has to uh, compress and obviously the bushing is going to uh, have a tensile, uh, tensile stress in it because it's gonna become fatter. Now, uh, the particular action bar from 3D Experience, which uh, we will be dealing with is uh, uh, interactions interactions and contact interference is something that we're going to have to to, to do uh, here's the icon for it and uh, before i go to the next slide i want to point out that this example was essentially uh, the continuation of the work of this youtuber which the same problem is done with uh, the abacus cae except that uh, uh, he's I, I believe he's assuming that the, the shaft is rigid uh, the dimensions are taken from that reference, and you can see that because the uh, hole is a little bit smaller than the shaft itself, there is some kind of an overlap here, as, as you can see on the left, uh, at the bottom left. Uh, brass is uh, the material for brass. We are assuming elas elastic uh, behavior, and the coefficient of friction between the two parts is uh, 0.1. And because of symmetry, I'm taking only one eighth of the model. Okay, so uh, that's what you see there. So the uh, the shaft is modeled with shell elements and uh, roughly size uh, one millimeter, and the bushing is made out of uh, linear break elements, which uh, size also of one. Yeah. Uh, okay. The thickness of the shaft is assumed to be one millimeter, and uh, uh, yeah, uh, sorry, the globe. This this is the thickness of that shaft. The size of the elements in the case of uh, uh, linear break is one millimeter. Twenty layers in this way, this direction, uh, circumferential direction, and uh, one point five millimeter for the shell that you see there. Now, because we are using symmetry. The edges have to be properly restrained. Obviously, these faces are still symmetric, but uh, symmetrical boundary condition. But these edges uh, and their shell element, we have to apply the proper symmetry conditions here. That end of the shaft is assumed to be entirely clamped. Uh, once we finish this, I will show you how to uh, use this feature in Abacus where you can take the 1 8 model and repeat it cyclically so that it gives you uh, the, 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 the view as if it was not, uh, uh, somebody was not used. Okay, so let's go ahead here. Uh, we are in assembly, so let's insert the first part, insert a new, uh, 3D, 3D part, and I'm going to call this thing a bushing. Uh, right click properties. Bushing. And bushing. Okay, let's go make it. So uh, 3D shape on that vertical plane. We'll sketch uh, two arcs and uh, two lines so this is going to be the outside arc of the bushing diameter uh, radius 50 and then we're going to do the inside arc uh, 
and the radius of that is 24.7 millimeter and uh, let's complete uh, this sketch by drawing two lines here because I'm going to do the padding now notice that there is a gap here I think there is a gap I left out on purpose a gap here because I want to show you what happens uh, this will not actually pad so we have to come back and close this thing let's exit and try to do a, a in the volume tab let's try to do a volume extrude this uh, notice that I can't close this thing and uh, at the bottom left corner it says select the closed non-self intersecting profile uh, to be extruded and we have not done that cancel that so let's go back to that section and uh, I mean obviously if you if you find what the issue is you can go ahead and fix it but you can also use the under the analysis tab there's a sketch analysis and it tells you that there is a profile that is open it tells you exactly where, it, where it's open actually and you can close it this is a close these are things that are coming from Katia uh, Katia v5 in fact the reason is that what we are using here uh, not the FEA solver but the CAD part of it is actually Katia v5 uh, v5 slash v6 uh, exit now we can uh, extrude that or we don't call it extrude uh, well, well I guess they call it extrude but they don't call it bad well, this is fine except that it's 10 millimeter and it's in the other direction i want it to be in the other direction okay good uh, let's apply properties of brass on that so tools uh, let's create uh, material i'll call it uh, brass material october 25 20 okay this will be created in the database without any numbers yet it's right here bushing october 25th uh, 20 actually i didn't call uh, let, let me let me refresh this thing because i gave it a different name these are from other uh, uh other uh, tutorials that I've done. So uh, let me see now. Brass material. This is the one that I just created. Okay, brass material. These things run from, uh, you know, other uh, videos. So uh, say apply. Close that, and we apply it on that. Check mark, green check mark, to be able to close that. And now we're going to put in our numbers. Double click on this. Okay, uh, it's uh, structures, abacus multiphysics, mechanical, elasticity, elastic, and that is 100,000 MPA. Young's modulus is 100,000 MPA, okay, which is 100 GPA, and Poisson ratio is 0.34. Say okay. Good. And as far as uh, this pushing is concerned, it's all done. So we go all the way to the top, insert our second part, which is our uh, shaft. So uh, insert 3D part. And I'm going to call this thing right click, right click properties. I'll call it uh, uh, shaft. Shaft. And shaft. Let me say OK. Let's go make it. Uh, double click on 3D shape on that same vertical plane. I'll use a sketch. This time an arc. Uh, let's see now. Uh, uh, where is our uh, sketches? Right there. Arc, which is 50, 25 millimeter in uh, radius. Okay, so that's going to be 25. And uh, as I pointed out uh, in the other videos, that you see that there is an overlap here. You can see that actually the the arc is inside of that bushing. All right, fine. Uh, we go to surface and we extrude it 100 millimeter. Except that I want it to go in the other direction. Uh, where is that 100 millimeter? Right here. 
100 millimeter except that I wanted to go in the other direction because that's where I did the other ones too. It really doesn't matter. But Okay, so as far as material is concerned, it is the same as uh, uh, same as the bushing, which is the brass. So what we can do is, uh, one way to do that, we go to tools. Here's the material stuff. Notice that there is a tester here, pick material, and you go from the tree and pick that guy. And then you come back and apply it to... Uh, Let me try it again. Let me try that. Pick material there, and now I can go and apply it to that. Instead of going to the, you know, browser and say find it and then say apply, so that's another way of doing it. It's already same, same, same numbers. Good. Now uh, that is pretty much it. So we're going to go all the way to the top. Go all the way to the top. Okay. So uh, I'm going to create my uh, finite element mesh at the assembly level instead of doing mesh the parts and then try to put them together. For that, I'm going to go all the way at the at top and then say, uh, here, uh, get into the uh, structure model creation, right? You can do that. That's one way of doing it. There is another way I want to remind you of. You go here, right click, insert, representation, finite element model. Okay, and notice that it did create the same thing for us. It's as if we had gone to the uh, uh, structure model creation and then uh, meshed it there. It's there, except we have to mesh it. Now, to mesh it, you're going to, first of all, if you go this route, here's what's going to happen. If you go this route, when you double click on uh, node and elements, it reminds you that there are two parts making this. Uh, which one of them do you want to participate? Well, actually, I want both of them to participate. Okay. And now we go to measure and do a sweep mesh for this. Sweep mesh for the bushing, except that I don't want the extra. The, the, the sweeping to be in that direction, I want this face and the back face to be swept. I mean, that's how I want it to be. So I say met, uh, manual source and target. Uh, let's delete, uh, let's remove this, remove this and remove that. And we go and select it. So for this source, I select this. And for the target, I select, for example, that. And then uh, size one millimeter, 20, 20 layers like this in the radial direction. Then we say mesh and it does it for us. Okay, that goes this way. Now, uh, oh, you give it properties, so uh, say okay. And then we go to properties. Uh, now notice that, see there's a green tick mark here. That means that this is pinned. In other words, the other stuff is here too. Both of these are showing. I don't want this is hard to read, so I'm going to un unpin that. So when I say property, just the, that stuff shows, okay? When you have these green triangles there on the top left corner, it means that all of these are going to be open. I don't want it. So I select this, select that part. Uh, brass is selected. That's good. Back to meshing. Because I want to mesh this thing now with the shell element, and the kind of shell element that I want is uh, uh, this one, the, the surface quad mesh. There we are, one and a half millimeter mesh it. There we, there we go, and then we go and apply section uh, section property, which is right here. Properties, see that? Properties, and on this, which is going to be also brass. We say fine. Okay, that takes care of this. There are no, uh, you know, reference points and things like that as we did it in tutorial one and two. We go all the way to the top. Okay, actually I could have stayed there. So we go to the uh, structural scenario creation. I didn't have to go all the way to the top. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> okay, so. Uh, Select your finite element model. It's the one that we created up here, 17125. It's right there. 
if there are multiple things that you have created, then you have to select it from the list. But here is there's only one finite dollar model that I did. Good. Now, uh, no procedure exists, so click on the procedures tab, and here is a static step. And I'm going to change this thing initial uh, initial time increment to 0.1. Everything else, did I do that? Point, point 0.1. Everything else is default. All right. What's going on? Oh, cancel. I made this one I didn't want. Delete it, clicked it twice. Let's make sure that the time is okay. Yeah, point 0.1. Good. Very good. Now we're going to apply our uh, symmetry boundary condition. So boundary conditions, uh, symmetry, remember symmetry was here, uh, planar symmetry, so this was a planar symmetry, this is a planar symmetry, that back is a planar symmetry over there, okay, what else do we know? So this edge is in the uh x y plane of symmetry so we have to restrain certain degrees of freedom uh let's change change this thing to fix displacements this edge is in the x y plane of symmetry so there is no displacement in z and rotations are exactly the opposite let's uh, select another one this edge is in the xz plane of symmetry you see that in xz so no displacement in y as soon as you say xz plane of symmetry no displacement in y rotations are exactly the opposite there's another edge here this edge over there so another one if i'm having problems selecting some of these edges what you should do is say right click uh, visibility manager don't show me the finite dollar mesh just show me the edges okay so fix the fix displacement let's see if we can pick this edge so if I'm having a problem right click don't show me this there is a sketch here don't show me the sketch let me see for a second. There is a sketch here, I believe. There must be a sketch here that won't let me pick this. There. Okay. And this is in the. Let's see now. Uh, this one is in the YZ plane, I believe. Let's see for a second. Yeah, that's in the YZ plane, so there is no displacement in X. And rotations are exactly the opposite okay i'm assuming that that end is clamped so either you can go and select it like this this edge and say uh, none of these are activated so this is clamped or you could have none clamped from here but uh, let me see let me, let me show you if you do clamp that'll be the same thing but the icon will, will look different, it looks like that. Okay, so it's, it's entirely up to you how you want to do that. One edge is entirely clamped, or I could have selected the edge says X, Y, Z, and rotation X, Y, Z, you would have gone something like this. Well, I'll, I'll leave it like that, I'll leave it like this. Good. Okay, so where's the guy that uh, that's hiding? So here's the guy that's hiding. Uh, let me see now, that part I hit. Oh, there we are. Okay, the next thing is create the interaction. Uh, first, define the friction coefficient on the contact property. Let's say my, my, my coefficient. My coefficient. Okay, my coefficient. And, uh, uh, oops, did I define it here? Wait a minute. I think I defined it, or I didn't put any values in it. Double click on it, friction, and let's put down 0.1. Okay, 0.1. 
good. And then we need a, a surface uh, surface based uh, uh, contact. So uh, if here is a, con a surface surface based contact between this face as the primary surface and this face as the secondary sur surface. Let me try it again. Yeah, that, there we are. And then say, okay. And finally, uh, we have to define contact right here, contact uh, interference for that surface, uh, surface space contact that we created right there. And we say, okay. We are almost done, except for one thing that I forgot to do probably. If I go to the uh, sh this shell section, I forgot to put the thickness there. That's why there is an exclamation mark here. The, sh the thickness of the shell I forgot to put, and I'm going to say one millimeter. And you say, OK, now there is no exclamation mark here. You can always uh, update these uh, so that the update icon goes away. Good. Uh, hopefully we uh, have done everything we wanted to. I'm not. I, I think I think we have done everything. So uh, let's do a quick save. It's always a good idea to save before you run in case you have to abort it. If in fact the computer crashes, at least you have saved it. You can go get the stuff from there. Okay, good. So let's go ahead and uh, under uh, uh, where are we here? We have to go back to scenario, right? Scenario is when you do running. Okay, let's give it one second. All right, so under simulate, let's do a quick uh, model model check. If there is anything obvious, it's going to pop up. Let's do a simulation check. Once again, if there is anything obvious, it's going to reveal itself. I don't anticipate any problems. The only difference between this tutorial and the previous two is that the the the, uh, the shaft is going to also deform. There's going to be stresses in it, etc. So this is just the checking stage, simulation check. Similar to the data check that you do in the Abacus uh, Abacus program, because after all, the uh, the the solver in 3D experience is the Abacus program. But the interface, as you can see, is completely different, and they have nothing to do with each other. The functionalities, most of them are the same. Eventually, all of them are going to be the same. But uh, close and finally simulate. This is the run as soon as you actually get the. Uh, the box, dialog box with the OK in it. You say OK. It has not started running yet. But when it does, it's going to be very fast. OK, so now when I say OK, then the process of running begins. Uh, when you click on iteration, that's the same as the monitor in Abacus. Okay. We could have done the uh, plastic analysis, make sure things don't yield, etc. But uh, we just did a straightforward elastic uh, calculations. Okay, it's done. And now let's go and check a few things. All right. So this is the initial uh, initial uh, stage. Obviously, nothing is. Uh, uh, everything is zero, so we go to the next one, we go to the next one, and you can see when you go to the last step, which is the final solution to this problem, uh, this is the one needs to stress in it, okay? Uh, now, uh, if you wonder why the one needs to stress is so much different from the previous two runs that we did, 
because there we never used the thickness of one. The thickness was uh, almost zero in the case of the first tutorial, almost zero, 0 0.0001, because uh, I didn't want the thickness to come into the problem. But here, they're both deformable, so they must have the correct uh, thicknesses. Now, the one last thing that I want to show you is uh, if you, if you, if you click on that, or double click on it, move this thing on the side, move this thing on the side, and under the last, uh, under the middle, uh, middle icon, right, right there, you click on this, and put a scale factor of uh, 10, because when you're doing a nonlinear problem, the scale factor is automatically set to 1. But uh, I'm going to turn it into 10 because I want to see what happens to that shaft. And then say apply, and then say OK. You can see that actually the shaft is deflecting too, deforming too. In tutorials 1 and 2, this never happened because this, this were rigid or analytical rigid surface. So there is no deformation of the shaft. But here, both are deforming. One last thing. If the, uh, if the shaft is solid, uh, then you can model this thing with solid elements. It's going to be exactly the same thing, except that you don't have shell here, you have solids. Okay, that takes care of uh, our uh, video, uh, video three, except that there's one last thing I want to do. I want to show you how to make it as if this was uh, uh, not one eighth of the model. So here's what you're going to do. These are the uh, steps that you have to go through while you're in the results and we are in the result click on display click on results option click on this icon and check all the planes of symmetry that you you want so what do i mean by that so uh, we are in display we are in results here's the display tab here results option click on that guy model symmetry model symmetry show it to me move move this thing away and then show all these planes one by one. And you can see what happens. Okay. Well, good luck.